Welcome back to NE 630. Uh, so today's lecture will be uh, starting chapter two. So we just uh, discussed briefly the, uh, what we mean by the multiplication factor and today we will continue uh, the rest of the uh, chapter. So I want to remind you that um, next uh, Wednesday there will, be a, uh, there will be a class but instead of the regular le lecture we will have two presenters. They are coming from uh, Wolf Creek Power Station and they will give two presentations. The first one will be about Fukushima nuclear accident and the other one will be about core design and fuel management and power stations. So hopefully you will enjoy the uh, two presentations next Wednesday. So I uh, encourage everybody to attend. Okay, so let's uh, continue. So uh, we just discussed <coughs> last time what we mean by the multiplication factor and we said that it is total number of neutrons number of neutrons uh, in generation in divided by the number of neutrons in generation n minus one which is the previous previous generation. <coughs> in order to um, be able to calculate what k in terms of the physical parameters of the, uh, let's say, of the rea nuclear reactor, for example, like fuel concentration, cross sections, and so on. This will be what we will, we will be doing during this chapter. So we will look for what constituent the different components of the multiplication factor. Uh, last time we stated that if K is greater than one, we are in a sober critical reactor because the number of neutrons will keep going up without any limit and this is the uh, like the nuclear let's say if, if it is a nuclear pump this is the uh, uh, nuclear chain reaction or if it, is, if it is in a nuclear reactor it will be controllable using the uh, control rods if k is less than one it will keep decreasing until it stops and this is the subcritical situation if k is equal to one this is the critical situation and usually we need our nuclear reactor to work on a if, it, if it's working on a steady state power to have k equal to one. Once you, let's say, you shut down the reactor, you will insert the control rods, you will make more absorption than production, and you will decrease k below one, and this will bring the reactor safely to zero power. If you want to make power transition from low power to high power, you have to remove the control rods, and this will reduce the absorption and will increase the rest of the uh, production. So the k will be greater than one, and you will have multiplication for the power. So let's look for certain definitions here. So if we define the ratio and we, we will call it alpha <coughs> and usually alpha we will call it capture capture to fission ratio and the capture to fission ratio is just sigma radiative capture over sigma fission. Again <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I do not want to remind you that if we if we just multiply this and this by the number density of the fuel, this will give us what the, the macroscopic cross section. Then, if we multiply by the same flux that the fuel sees, it will give us the total number of, of, of absorption divided by the total number of fission. So, so that's it. This is just absorption to fission ratio. So, um, so <coughs> if we can represent this sigma f divided by sigma f plus sigma gamma, this is just the probability that the neutron will induce fission. Yes, because this is, if you multiply by n phi, this will give you the total number of fission and downstairs will give you the total number of all interactions, fission plus absorption. So this is the probability that you will get fission, the neutron will induce fission. So this is just probability of inducing inducing fission. So <coughs> now the probability of inducing fission I can just um, change it or rewrite it in terms of the alpha, the variable alpha here. So I can divide by uh, sigma fission up, upstairs and downstairs and this will give me 1 over 1 plus alpha. So this is equal to 1 over 1 plus alpha. So let's go ahead and, and define another 
another parameter, which is eta. So eta is just nu multiplied by sigma fission divided by sigma fission plus sigma absorption. So let's, let's go ahead and modify this, this one. So if I multiply upstairs and downstairs by number density multiplied by the flux, upstairs and downstairs. So what's this? This will be nu multiplied by sigma fission phi divided by sigma fission phi plus sigma absorption phi. What's this? Sigma fission phi is what? Total number of neutrons, per total number of fission reaction per centimeter cube per second. Yes? What's new is the average number of neutrons produced per fission. Average number of neutrons produced bare fission. So every fission there is an average number, let's say for uranium-235 will be 2.45. So this is the average number. So if you multiply <coughs> the number of fissions, if you multiply it by the number of fissions, you multiply it by how many neutrons produce bare fission. So this is the total number of neutrons produced bare fission, yes? So this is in, in, the, in all fissions, yes? So what's sigma fission? phi plus sigma absorption phi. Reaction total reaction rate. Yes? So in this case, this will be the total number of neutrons produced bare fission, bare neutron absorbed, whatever absorbed the absorption will lead to. Whether it will lead to, because the absorption might lead to fission or might lead to just gamma. This is gamma, by the way. Sigma, uh, sigma gamma. Okay, so whatever whatever the absorption will lead to, absorption is sigma sigma fission plus sigma gamma. So this is sigma fission plus sigma gamma multiplied by phi. This quantity is just sigma absorption multiplied by phi. So this is the eta. The definition of eta is number of neutrons produced per fission bare neutron absorbed absorbed in fuel so for every neutron absorbed in fuel how many neutrons you will produce from fission did you understand this okay so now this is just I can rewrite it again as just nu multiplied by 1 over 1 plus alpha now, let's define another term, it's called F, and we call it neutron, or we call it thermal utilization. So, let me remind you of something important here. This is the total number of neutrons produced per fission, per neutron absorbed in the fuel. It's the neutron absorbed in the fuel because you might, the neutron might get absorbed in fuel like uranium-235 uh, or uranium-238 for example, but it, it will not lead to, uh, to uh, fission. It will lead to just radiative capture because uh, the first lecture when we show or second lecture when we study the cross-section, I show you that the uranium-235 has fission cross-section and absorption cross-section. So it has a probability that it can absorb the neutron without inducing fission. There is a, there is a threshold usually for fission, but it's very, very small for uranium-235. But there is a probability that you will get absorbed in uranium-235 without inducing fission. So this is the number of neutrons produced in fission or bare fission, bare neutron absorbed in the fuel. Now, there is, if we define this parameter, this is the number of absorption in the fissile material or in the fuel. So F is just absorption in fuel divided by total absorption. 
which is absorption in fuel plus absorption in moderator plus structural material and so on. So this is this is just the probability that the neutron will get absorbed in the fuel. Yes? Because if I if I make this sigma absorption in the fuel, F means fuel, divided by sigma absorption in the fuel, fuel plus sigma absorption in the moderator, plus sigma absorption in the structural material. So <coughs> if I multiply phi upstairs and phi downstairs, this will give me so the probability this is sigma absorption total total absorption everywhere so <coughs> this is how am I or I am utilizing my my absorption if this number if this number is very low this means that not all the neutrons are absorbed in the fuel they are absorbed somewhere else so if you insert the control rods fully inside your reactor what will you, what you will do <coughs> you add another term here which is sigma absorption for control rods yes so if you add sigma absorption here this will increase the denominator and will reduce the whole fraction so you are not utilizing the fuel yes if you eliminate the control rods from your reactor this means that you decrease this part and the whole fraction will increase again. So this, this is called thermal utilization. And this is a thermal, all the absorption is evaluated at thermal energy. This is why we call it thermal. So it's the thermal because it is, it is the cross section is more dominant in the thermal energy for the neutrons. So this, is, this shows me what percentage of neutrons get, uh, getting absorbed or get it absorbed in the fuel compared to the rest of the absorbers inside the reactor. Okay, so I can write this as N for fuel multiplied by sigma for fuel. In the book, they, they write the fuel as fossil material. Okay, because the fuel is uranium-235, for example. And this is N for fuel divided by sigma for fuel plus N others multiplied by sigma other other means anything else other than the fuel. Now, let me define now another, another quantity that I will call the fast fission factor, epsilon. And I will call it fast fission factor. So what's the fast fission factor? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In the nuclear reactor, the neutrons will be emitted from the fission with a distribution of energy called chi distribution. This chi distribution will have uh, up to, let's say, 5 or 10 million electron volts and the cutoff at 100 kilo electron volt. Then it will moderate, start moderating until it reaches to one electron volt, which is the cutoff for the thermal energy. Once it reaches to the thermal energy, it will thermalize <coughs> with the molecules of the moderator, whatever moderator you have. In this case, water, it will mo moderate with the, uh, or thermalize with water molecules. And it will form a Maxwellian distribution. So usually, <coughs> the main fission took place at thermal energy in this Maxwellian energy range. But there is still a probability because the cross-section still has some value at high energy. So there is still probability that you will induce uh, fast fission. And the probability is higher at the uh, higher energies also for uranium-238 because uranium-238 can now at higher energy uh, contribute to the fast, the fast fission. So the fast fission is just a factor that will give you total number of fissions, total number of fissions both thermal at thermal energy plus at fast energy fast energy it can come from uranium-235 also or it can come from uranium-238 
divided by total number of fissions at thermal energy alone. Total number of fissions. So what do you think? Is it greater than one or less than one? Greater than one. Or at thermal energy. So this, this number usually is epsilon will be usually greater than or equal to one. And epsilon here, if we have combination of uranium-235 and uranium-238, so sigma for fission for uranium-235 multiplied by the number density for 235 plus sigma fission for uranium-238 multiplied by number density for 238 divided by uranium sigma fission for uranium-235 and for uranium-235. By the way, <coughs> during the Manhattan Project, in order to be a little bit more secure, they did not use to write 235 and 238 and so on. So they give a chromium to uh, the materials. So if you have uranium-238-92, so they will take the first uh, digit here in the uh, tens of the uh, atomic uh, number, and they will take the, 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 the last digit here also in the atomic uh, mass number. This is the atomic, atomic number and this is the atomic mass number, and they will call it 28. So whenever you will find anywhere in the book uh, sigma 28, it means 238, uranium 235, uh, it is 25. So 25 is 235. Uh, plutonium uh, 94, 240. So if you find 40, 40 come from 94 and 0 from 240. So this is uh, plutonium to 240 and so on. So if you find in the book uh, uh, sigma 25 and N25 and sigma 28 and N28, this was the acronym that they adapt at Manhattan Project for the uh, nuclear, nuclear bomb. So, now, let's look at another important parameters in our nuclear reactor. So, we studied four parameters so far. We studied alpha, eta, uh, F and Epsilon. So now let's look for what we call resonance escape probability, P. Resonance escape probability. So what happened is if you remember the cross-section that I just showed to you, um, several, several lectures ago, if you look at the, the energy, the distribution function for the neutron energy versus energy, you will notice that we have this chi distribution, then we have this uh, slowing down, then we have this Maxwellian distribution here, something like this. So this is the chi for the fast, fast energy region. And then we have the epithermal. We call this, this epithermal. And it is 1 over E, the variation. Then this is the Maxwellian distribution. And usually the cutoff for the Maxwellian is 1 electron volt. The cutoff here is 100,000 electron volts. Now, look at let's say the cross-section for uranium-235, uh, for example. You will notice that the cross-section starts at something like around 1,000 thousand bar. This is the cross-section as a function of energy versus energy. Then it goes like this. Then it has very intense unresolved resonance. Then it goes something like this. Okay? So let's say that this is sigma absorption for, for, for uranium-235 or something like that, or sigma absorption for uranium-238, let's assume. Sigma absorption for uranium-238. What happens is, if the neutron is here, born here at this energy, it will have single collision 
and then lose the energy up to here, another collision, lose the energy here, another collision, lose the energy here. So it has lots of collision until it reaches finally in the thermal energy and induce uh, fission. But what will happen is while the neutron loses energy and doing the moderation, because of the presence of uranium-238 in the fuel, uh, definitely if the neutron will get in this very high absorption region, because this is a, a resonance absorber and the cross-section is very high, so there is a chance that the neutron will get absorbed and will not survive to the fission region or the thermal region to induce another fission. Yes? So we want, all what we want from the resonance escape probability is to be able to calculate what's the probability that the neutron will, will get outside the resonance region without being absorbed. Did you understand? So this is the resonance escape probability. So neutrons are emitted usually from, the f from fission with an average energy 1.98 MeV, nearly 2 MeV. While slowing down, there is a chance that the neutron will be absorbed in resonance like the resonance for the uranium-238. So P is nothing more than, this is called resonance escape. So this is the probability, probability that neutron will escape or escape from resonance region resonance region you remember you remember the the um, the law for collision the e prime which is the energy final energy after the collision is equal to what alpha multiplied by e yes alpha is what A plus one, A minus one divided by A plus one, all square. What does it mean? If alpha is very, very small, like hydrogen, there is hydrogenous material in the reactor. So one, only one single collision can bring the neutron energy from two MeV to zero. Just one collision. Because alpha is one minus one over one plus one. But this is the minimum case. What's the minimum case when the neutron will have a collision 180 degree knock and bounce back. But if the, col if the collision is a uh, hidden collision and, and the neutron will move forward with zero, angle zero, it might not lose anything. So there is a still probability that you will lose all the energy or not all the energy at all. Yes? So if there is hydrogen presence in the uh, reactor, the neutron will be here maybe with single collision Let's say the neutron is now here. Maybe with single collision with hydrogen, it will go outside. So if the, if the moderator alpha is very, very small, like hydrogenous material or something like this, the number of collision that you will, you will induce or you will, you will have inside this resonance, in a, we call this delta E resonance. So it's the resonance width, let's say resonance resonance, the whole resonance, let's say. So usually resonance width, if we call resonance width, it will be for only one single resonance. And this is full width at half maximum. But for right now, I am calling this res resonance, the whole resonance region. If the neutron will have several collisions inside this resonance, there is a big probability that it will be absorbed. Because maybe you will get a collision here, and there is, because this is just a probability. So there is a probability that you will be absorbed and there is a probability that you will not be absorbed. So maybe you will not absorb it and you will continue. So let's assume there is two situations. All this will be discussed later uh, in a later chapter in details. But let's assume that you will get here. So if you will get here and your second collision will get you out, there is a high chance that you will not get absorbed. But let's assume that the moderator is uh, such that you are doing several collision inside the resonance. So if you escape the resonance here, you will not escape it here. If you escape it here, you will not escape it here. If you escape it here, you will not escape it here. So there is a big chance that you will be absorbed. 
and all this will be discussed later on when we discuss the neutron moderation without absorption and neutron moderation with absorption in the nuclear reactors. So did you understand what's the P, what's the resonance escape probability now? Okay, so let's define one more term so that we'll be able to build up all of those terms and build up our or form our um, criticality factor K. This probability is called probability of non-leakage and we call it non-leakage non probability. What does it mean non-leakage probability? Probability that the neutron while slowing down from fast energy to thermal energy will not leak from the system. Leak from the system going out from the reactor core. It will not come back again. So this is probability that neutron will not leak out while moderation and slowing down. Because it is exactly the same like here. And I said the neutron is born here and it is slowing down, there is a chance that it will get absorbed in the what? In the resonance. And the other <coughs> probability, it will leak out from the system. It will be, here is the fuel bins. Let's assume that this, those are the fuel bins. And surrounding the fuel bins is your moderator. So let's assume that you are here. You get out of fission. You make a couple of collisions inside the fuel. It does not reduce your energy much because the mass of the fuel is very high. Then you get to the moderator. You make several collisions. Then you leak out without inducing another fission. So you lose this neutron. Yes? You lose this neutron. While another one started here, get several collisions, then come back to the fuel and induce fission. So this is this PNL. So PNL, I can write it as two form. PNLF and PNLT. Where this is the fast non-leakage probability fast non-leakage probability and this is the thermal non-leakage probability. What does it mean? It means your probability that you will not leak while you are in the fast energy region and your probability that you will not leak while you are thermalizing with the fuel itself. Guys, did you get everything here? So let's do the final collection. <clears throat> Do you have any question? So what's K? K is what? Total number of neutrons absorbed in generation N over the previous generation. So let's assume I have Sigma absorption total everywhere, everywhere, multiplied by the flux. So at, at generation one, I have what sigma absorption total multiplied by phi? Total absorption rate in the whole system, in the fuel and also in what? In the moderator and everything, everything. So this is at generation number one. If I multiply this, by sigma absorption total, phi in the fuel, sigma absorption in the fuel divided by sigma absorption everywhere. What's this? The total number of neutrons absorbed in the fuel divided by the total number of neutrons absorbed everywhere. What's this? Theta. Huh? Theta. No, F. F. 
which is the thermal utilization. Yes? Thermal utilization means total number of neutrons absorbed in the fuel divided by the total number of neutrons absorbed everywhere. Yes, guys? Did you have any question? So this is what? F. Now, if I do, now, write sigma absorption in the fuel multiplied by phi, okay? Of course, somebody will say, why you write phi and phi? You can cancel phi and phi. Sigma absorption in the fuel, and I multiply this by sigma fission now of the fuel phi. So what's, what's this? Eight, this is not eta. This is one of the definition, part of eta. Part of eta, yes? If I multiply this by nu, it will give me what? Eta, yes? So if I must, so, but what, what's this? Huh? One over one plus alpha. It's a new multi, yeah, it's eta over nu. But let me, let me ask you right now, what's this? If you clear this, with this, yes? And you clear this with this, this will give you total number of fissions. Yes? Total number of fissions. If you multiply this by nu, this will give you what? Total number of neutrons produced per fission. Yes? Total. So what's this? Eta. This is eta. Now, when I do sigma absorption, sigma fission in the fuel phi, I'm just saying that this, this, this number of fissions is just coming from the thermal fission. Yeah? But if I want to see how many neutrons are produced from thermal as well as fast, yes? I have to multiply by what? By sigma absorption, sigma fission in the in the fuel, in this case it is 25, plus sigma absorption, sigma fission in the fuel, in this case 28, divided by what? And here you multiply by phi and phi. Yes? Yes, guys? So what's this? Epsilon. Yes? So now, look at this. Look at this. You, you cascade, you are cascading. We started with total number of neutrons absorbed everywhere. If we multiply by this, we transform it. This will cancel with this, and this is the total number of neutrons absorbed only in what? In fuel. Yes? Then if I multiply by this, this will cancel with this, and this will give me the total number of neutrons produced per fission. And then if I multiply this, this will cancel with this, and I will only be left with this, and this is the total number of neutrons produced both from thermal and fast fission. But those neutrons will be produced under this curve, because the neutron produced in the fission will be under this curve. So all of them, all those neutrons, will be fast neutrons. Yes? Will be what? fast neutrons. So I have to multiply this total number of neutrons produced here by the resonance escape probability to say that they will reach here without being absorbed in the, in the, in the, absor in the resonance. So what's this now? This is the total number of neutrons produced bear both fast and thermal fission that will be able to successfully survive absorption in the resonance and will reach to the thermal energy. Yes? Okay. If I multiply again this by NFL, I will say that this is the total number of neutrons that they will reach successfully to where? To the thermal, to the thermal what? to the thermal energy region. 
if they if they will re, if they will escape if they will escape the resonance and they will escape the leakage what they will do they will be absorbed again so this is the total number of neutrons that will be absorbed whether in the fuel or anywhere in the reactor in the second generation so k multiplication factor is nothing more than this number divided by the previous generation which was what you started at the very early beginning with what? Sigma absorption total, yes? And then you end up with this number that will be absorbed in the next generation. Yes, guys? So this will lead to what? Sigma absorption T will cancel with sigma absorption T, and I will end up with K equal to what? Eta F epsilon P, P non-leakage fast, B non leakage thermal. You have to memorize this like your name. This is called six factor formula. If you are in an infinite reactor, what does it mean an infinite reactor? Very large, very infinite. Do you have leakage in infinite reactor? So what's those two terms? one so in this case this is k and this is why we call it effective for the actor that is finite and this is k infinity just the eta f p epsilon and this one also is called four factor formula guys did you understand this so all what we did in today's lecture is just, is just to deduce those two formulas. You have to memorize those like your name. I remember when I was an undergrad like you, we have a professor who did a um, oral examination in the course. And he was asking one of the students how many factors in the six factor formula. He said, 17. Then you say, okay, good, good, thank you. So this is the six-factor formula. And he asked him, how, how many factors? He said 16. So you have to memorize this. So eta P epsilon F for factor formula, add for, F for, for a finite system, add the non-leakage probability, which is two term, you will get the six-factor formula. Any, any questions so far? Do you, have, do you want me to repeat anything? I still have time. You say the, the K. I would say for the, the bottom bar, you said uh, K to infinity was. Uh, infinite reactors, you do not have the probability of non leakage as well. For sure, you will not leak. So P, P, N, uh, P, N, L, fast or thermal is one. Yes, Mohammed? Yeah, I'm asking about the infinity. Infinity means the infinite system. So it's, it's infinite multiplication factor or finite multiplication factor. So did you know? So if, if the guy that he will come next week, for example, he will say that, oh, okay, effective is, is, is this, you will know what's K effective. He cannot talk about K infinity in a finite system. Did you understand? So maybe we give an example, then, then we will stop. So it's a pressurized water reactor. Eta is just 1.65, and F is just 0.71. So the thermal utilization is 71%. 71% of your neutrons will be absorbed in the fuel, and epsilon is just small number 1.02. 
So 2% is produced in uh, fast fission. And the resonance escape probability is just 70, 87%. So if you calculate K infinity, you will get 1.04, which is greater than 1. If you have, let's say, K non-leakage in the fast is equal to 97%, and the non-leakage in the thermal is almost 99%, almost 1. So the K effective will be equal to 1. So if you multiply 1.04 by those two numbers, this will give you uh, a K effective equal, equal to 1. So for for your nuclear reactor, when you design the nuclear reactor, of course, you do not want to put your fuel that will make you K-effective equal to 1. Why? Because once you run for a... <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, once you will start running, you will consume some of the fuel, you will become subcritical, and you will not be able to start again. So you have to have what we call accessory activity in the core. And the activity we will define reactivity next time as rho equal to k minus 1 divided by k. And if k is greater than 0, which is positive, this is critical. This is when k is e greater than 1. If rho is less than or equal to 0, which is negative, this is positive, this is subcritical, and this is k less than 1. And if rho is equal to 0, this is critical. This is sober critical, by the way, sober. And this is when k equal to 1. So this also will tell you, if you do this um, analysis for natural uranium and water, natural uranium and water, in order to do in order to do, uh, to get your multiplication factor equal to one, you will not be able to do it with natural uranium and light water. Why? Because you will notice that you will need eta greater than, let's say, two, in order to be able to do s some, some of those reactions. This is why, usually, you will not, there is no natural, re natural uranium reactors with light water. Natural uranium reactors run with heavy, with heavy water. Why? Because eta is the total number of neutron emitted per fission per neutron absorbed. Yes? And the thermal utilization is the total number of neutron absorbed per fuel per neutron absorbed everywhere. You will notice that for moderator, the light water, which is hydrogen, has 10,000 times absorption cross-section greater than the deuterium. And this is what makes you uh, short. K, K infinity or K effective will be less than 1. You will not be able to do a nuclear reactor based on light water and uh, natural uranium. But if you, if you replace those calculations for heavy water, you will notice that when you calculate eta and, and f. So th this one, it's more or less the same. It's fast fission. And this one is just the resonance escape probability. So, but the most important two factors are those. And usually if you look, uh, if you look for light water and heavy water, you will notice that this will not be one for light water and, and natural uranium. But for natural uranium and heavy water, this would be greater than one. And this is why, in principle, you can build a uh, heavy water reactor based on natural uranium, like, like uh, can do. So in order, yes? Can you uh, use natural uranium in a graphite-moderated reactor? Yeah, for, yeah the, the natural uranium, yeah, you can do it. If you, can, if you do the calculation, because the first reactor built, in the, uh, built on the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Chicago University field, it was just a block of, uh, big block of, uh, 
of graphite, and I do not remember if the uranium was uh, enriched or not. But I, I will get back to you next, uh, next, uh, next lecture. Remind me. I have to check it back again. But again, if you want, and you, ha you, you have your um, K effective is small, you can do something else to be able to increase your K effective. Okay? So this is usually for homogeneous, for homogeneous what? Homogeneous reactors. N is homogeneous everywhere. So what we will do is we will lump the fuel. So we'll make fuel rods. Instead of just making homogeneous reactor, we will lump the fuel. So the, f the neutron, while it is inside the fuel, will have more time inside the fuel to spend to induce fission and, and, and uh, will have time outside the, the, the fuel to do moderation. So once it moderates, it will get into the fuel, induce the fission, uh, the fission again. But for the homogeneous reactor, there is a possibility that while the neutron is, is moderating, it will encounter uranium-238 and it will get absorbed before, before, before <coughs> thermalization. So to escape from this, make the fuel lumbed as a fuel rod, and what will happen? Neutron will get out of the fuel to the moderation. There is no fuel in the moderator region. It will moderate, then thermalize, and once it is thermalized, it will mark the fuel rods again and induce fission again. So now you increase what? By lumping the fuel. Increase P. You increase the resonance escape probability. Yes. You increase the resonance escape probability. Because in this case, you lump the fuel, neutron gets out from the fuel to the moderator region, there is no absorption in the moderator region except if it is light water, it will be with hydrogen, which is not that good, not large, compared to the uranium-238. So it will hang around with, with a couple of female hydrogen uh, molecules until it gets to the thermal energy region, then get back again to the fission and induce another fission. So this will increase the probability that it will escape uh, being caught from the police, which is in this case, let's say, uranium-238 is watching the neutron while it is hanging around in the, uh, in the reactor core. Did you understand? So this is called fuel lumbing. I, I, I will stay, stop here and continue next time the fuel lumbing and get into the end of chapter two. Thank you so much. Again, next week, I have to remind you that there is a presenter from uh, Wolf Creek uh, Nuclear Station. That's in, that's in here. here. Uh, it will be Wednesday, and they will present two presentations, one about Fukushima nuclear reactor uh, accident, and the other one about uh, fuel management and uh, uh, for, for the nuclear reactor. Well, thank you so much.